steadily it rises. Hey, hey, it's ODB, the Lincoln Addict, back with another episode. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you're new to the podcast, please consider subscribing. However you're listening, I can't thank you enough. Just to reinforce, in 2024, I'm going to try to produce more content. I have basically done that so far. And what I would ask is if you are listening to this via a podcast app, so that audio version, certainly finish it there. I appreciate it. You can also go and check it out on YouTube and you'll have the audio and the visual side of it. So I'm going to do kind of um, definitely a presentation throughout. And then when we get into the main topic of this episode, I'll go through it as well, kind of real time with you. Now, the main topic in this episode is Barrett Jackson, Scottsdale 2024. I found myself, you know, I'm doing a lot more YouTube content. That's really what I, where I want to focus my energy, but... What I have found is I'm spending the time going through this stuff. So I said, hey, why not make an an episode and then cover the other normal routine items that I cover typically in the podcast. So that's what I'm going to do now. I have done a few videos so far um, as it relates to Barrett Jackson 2024. So you can check those out on YouTube. But again, I'm going to go more of a deep dive and really reinforce a couple of key items in my opinion. I'm also going to compare, so stick with me to the end. I'm going to compare 2023 Barrett Jackson Scottsdale to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2024, and you might be amazed at what we find. And uh, it'll kind of reinforce where things are at. I know sometimes, as I've said in some of my videos, folks will see these very, very high priced cars, and then they kind of say to themselves, wow, I'm never going to get one. But remember, there's a very niche market, in my opinion, that is going to go after a car that is, you know, two, three, four hundred thousand uh, dollars. Certainly, there's other cars out there that you can obtain that aren't in that category. I think is the best way to put it. So again, uh, this episode we're gonna do a deep dive on Barrett Jackson prices. We'll get to that shortly. I'll cover a few items um, that I typically will cover, but keep in mind too, I'm trying to streamline this content to make it a little bit more fluid so that we can get through it quicker. I know everybody's busy. And, uh, for those that enjoy this content, thank you. Leave a comment, uh, again, subscribe if you can, and uh, definitely leave a thumbs up. So the episode overview is brought to you by our family at DVS customs. You can see here, we have various partners, including DVS, Colorado custom wheels, steel rubber, Griot's garage, and, of course, AccuWare, but a huge shout out to Jeff and team at Devious. Even if you're maybe new to the Lincoln world and you go, hey, I often receive this question, who should I go to for parts? Certainly go to DeviousCustoms.com and check out what Jeff and team have to offer from air suspension to window switch replacement, car audio items, windshields, if you will. There's a lot more that Jeff continues to offer in the market space, so I want to give him Uh, Definitely a huge shout out. Um, Again, what we're going to see here, um, just going back for a moment, Barrett Jackson, this is just a little bit of the collection that we'll talk about. There's only four images here of cars. There were actually 10 60s Lincoln, so 61 primarily through 69 that we'll go through. And then um, from a Lincoln Life update, which we're going to get into now uh, in the upper right corner, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to see the new Dakota digital gauges for 61 to 63 Lincolns. Uh, This is great. I will work to get Dakota digital on in the past. I have uh, dealt with them in the past. They're a wonderful company. They make fantastic products. So hopefully we'll talk about that more in the near future. So as we kind of get into what I refer to as kind of Lincoln life updates, more kind of the Lincoln scene, I think, if you will, for the most part, one of our partners, as I mentioned, Colorado Custom Wheels, one of the cool new things that they're offering in the market is the um, center cap that you see here. I'm going to show you a video in just a moment as well. And with the center cap, it basically, um, it, it, it doesn't spin but it's counterweighted. So you'll see this is a new offering from them. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to Instagram. And what we're going to do is we're going to see as the wheel spins and definitely apologize. This isn't as the wheel is spinning there. They've got it on their little spinning tool mechanism. Um, 
if you didn't notice, the center cap stays counterweighted. So it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, this has become a big thing in the truck scene, especially with dually wheels, eight lug wheels, where people want the center cap where it is. It, it always stays in that one orientation. There's a couple of reasons why. Number one, I mean, if you're driving down the road, does you know anybody really see it? You know, at a car show, maybe you're cruising the strip, maybe someone notices. Oh wow, look, check out the center cap. But more or less, the cool thing is when the car is parked, you basically have, for the most part, the correct orientation of the Lincoln logo or whatever is engraved into that billet aluminum cap. So pretty cool stuff. Again, I've always been uh, a fan of Colorado Custom Wheels going back uh, basically to the beginning of their existence. Uh, in the truck scene, they were uh, super big, and uh, Michael and team have continued – to kind of keep that legacy going. So that's kind of a new product offering. Uh, you can check them out if that's something that you would like um, on your ride. Um, the cool thing I would tell you is if you go to coloradocustom.com with no S, you will get a chance to see their premium wheels. And um, they make like a, a Cadillac wheel, dare I say the C word. They also make a Lincoln re wheel. And these are a replica of the wheel covers, also known as the hubcaps. Great thing is these won't go flying off like the hubcaps typically will with a non-biased ply tire, and they look fantastic. Plus, you can increase the wheel size. So on my 64 Lincoln Project Smugglers Blues, I've got these wheels without the center cap that you see here, and uh, just fin I just definitely love these wheels. Okay, next we're going to talk about Dakota Digital. So I hinted at this a moment ago. Again, if you're viewing this on YouTube, thank you. Stick with us. We're going to go through um, uh, what these cost as well as um, the look of these. Now, if you go to Dakota Digital, what I suggest that you do is you just type in Lincoln. And upon hitting enter, you're going to see the 61 through 63, the VHX, the 61 through 63 RTX. Those are both new products. And then you've had um, in the marketplace, I think originally was the 64 to 65 uh, VHX, which is the third option there, they had brought to market, surprisingly, before the ones through threes, they brought to market the 66 through 69. Jeff at Devious Customs has been selling those for a while. But where I want to start is if you think about what they've had, they've had the 64 and 65, the VHX series. And whether you love or hate these, certainly it's a great offering. A lot of people whether you love it or hate it, they're doing the resto mods and they're putting the modern engine drivetrains or modern drivetrains into these vehicles. And this product offers new sending units as well as an accurate gauge. Uh, typically, the older gauges have to be rebuilt or recalibrated uh, in your factory car, which I've done through Blair Farmer in the Clearwater area. And mine work for the most part uh, other than my amp gauge that has been bypassed. I've talked about that in the past. But this has been one option that we've had in the Lincoln market. Now, basically, uh, you have the VHX series, which launches, and you have this white or black option face, if you will, in terms of the gauges. And you are able to make this purchase through uh, Devious Customs is a, is a valid um, seller. And uh, the cool thing is, like, this option here, is just under a thousand dollars, so nine hundred and forty-five dollars. And what I want to do is I want to look at some of the options. You can basically change some of these colors, and again, with either the black or white, you have that main option. So that's going to be if someone peeks in their head, or you're sitting in your car, the car's turned off. Some of what I'm showing here is obviously like if you're driving at night and things like that. But this is a fantastic option not only for someone that is looking to do a resto mod, you know, maybe you're not putting a modern drivetrain, but let's say your gauges just aren't working or you want to do a slight restoration and kind of change things up. Certainly I've seen people with stock uh, setups, you know, in their, for the engine and trans, and then they decide, hey, I'm doing some minor modifications and I want to upgrade some things. Now there's some people that love these gauges, some people that don't. Now I think the smart thing, that Dakota Digital did here is the what I just showed was the VHX. If we take a look at the RTX, this is where I think there's definitely a game changer. And again, tip of the cap, kudos to 
uh, or excuse me, Dakota Digital, uh, they go on to say it only makes sense that we designed the rich-looking RTX gauge system for once for what was once dubbed quote the best-looking American-built car today. It goes on to say new aluminum bezels are dripping with chrome and surrounded or surround the OE-inspired appearance that has made the RTX series so popular. These are a perfect fit for your stock three-piece dash assembly. So 61 through 63 are essentially the same. There's one minor change on the factory, which I, I'll eventually talk about, um, where they go from a generator to an alternator. Uh, but that's a very, very, very minor. Most people would never even realize the little light up, if you will, on the gauge. And Chris Dunn and team over at Lincoln Land has reinforced that to me over the years. But for the most part, if you go to 61 through 63 and you go with this RTX instrument clusters, I mean, this, this is awesome. This is going to work uh, with your stock setup or if you decide to go with a Coyote or other engine, uh, dare I say, or a non-forward engine. Now, in addition, I think the game changer is when we look at, excuse me, these close-ups. Uh, I was texting my buddy Tony this morning, and I told him, you know, the cool thing about these gauges is you can change the colors. And when you look at some of these different uh, color options, fire and ice, uh, we're looking at ice and fire, ice white, wild aqua, wild rose. I mean, you just have this really bright appearance uh, but you can just literally change on the fly, which I think is just super awesome. They've got the specifications. They've got different options here. Uh, a dimming, a light dimming knob. Although D Dakota Digital Instrument Systems are programmable for both day and night intensity levels, the dim one will allow rotary or on the fly brightness adjustments added convenience. So there are some additional uh, features that you can add if you start getting into like the fuel sending unit. Dakota Digital Instrument Systems are designed to utilize a stock or aftermarket fuel level sensor. If a universal or replacement sensor is desired, the SEN 06-1 is a great choice. Uh, they've got a couple of other options as well, compass and outside temperature module, uh, things that you can add on. But the other gauges I just showed a moment ago were just under 1,000. These are just under 2,000, so there's, there's a lot more uh, that go into the RTX series. So I think certainly um, pretty cool option. And this is going to be fantastic for someone like Nick at Griot's Garage. Shout out to Nick. You know, when he did his resto mod, you know, you basically didn't have this option. You know, now you do. And again, even if somebody goes, hey, they want to go out, they want to work on their own car. Maybe they don't know a lot about this stuff. When you pick this stuff up and it comes with the new sending units, you basically run the wire back to the back of the gauge, uh, and it's it's that simple. You know, I think most people would be able to do this. Now, if I go back and I look at this one other image, I want to show you guys again if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see how uh, this setup works. Now, I said it runs to the back of the gauge. It actually runs to the module. So I've installed one of these before, and they're super simple. And what you're going to see on the back, you've got your little plugs where um, the things plug in, and then it goes to that little remote module. So you can, you don't have to maybe dive into the back of the dash as much. I mean, you have to take the pieces out, certainly. But it's not like you're having to like feed wires up uh, you know, behind this thing for the most part, other than your main little harnesses. Um, you know, depending on where you mount that little uh, main kind of brain, if you will. So, again, something to check out. Certainly not cheap. Nothing on these cars is really cheap. But as we continue to move on, something that I want to reinforce is we often hear, you know, no one makes parts for these cars. And I get that statement has been used a long time simply because, you know, you can't just go buy a water pump at your normal parts store. I get that. But the aftermarket, especially Dakota Digital, as well as Devious Customs, they have continued to uh, supply, you know, parts that are needed for these cars in, in many different applications. So, uh, shout out to Dakota Digital. Now, the Lincoln Life Updates is brought to you by our family at Colorado Custom. We looked at their new center caps, and uh, we want to thank them again, coloradocustom.com. You can go out there and check out their premium wheels. If you want to get a hold of their Lincoln replica wheels, uh, hit up Michael and team 
their contact information is available at coloradocustom.com. Okay, so next I'm going to go into Lincoln's in the media. So if you think about TV shows, movies, music videos, album covers, I kind of cover it all uh, at this point. Uh, it's pretty cool to me anytime I come across a video, a music video, or a film that has these Lincolns as an example. The uh, the Indy 5 film, Indiana Jones 5, that came out last year, that film f- has a couple of Lincolns in it. And I did a video even t- um, during the production of the film before it even came out, and I kind of highlighted what was the come in the uh, ticker parade, if you will. So uh, th- that's just one example. Here we see in Alanis Morissette's Hand in My Pocket music video, definitely a beloved song, 39 million views uh, on YouTube. And if we jump over here, I'm not going to go through the whole video, but um, this is from Jagged Little Pill, her, I think, um, definitely, I I would say, platinum-selling album. I know she's... uh, someone that a lot of people love, but you can see here, 65, Lincoln Continental Convertible, that parade-type atmosphere, which is cool. There's a there's a cool uh, shot. And when I first saw this, I was like, man, is she really driving it? You know, it kind of looked almost like, was she, was she uh, CGI'd into it? I guess I'm not 100% sure, but uh, there's some cool shots of her. You can see here, which I don't think is CGI, but you can see the originality if you're watching on YouTube of the seats and things like that. But basically, it's an Arctic white uh, 65 Lincoln Continental convertible, which I think is cool. Again, anytime I see this stuff in music videos and whatnot, I really dig it. So check that out. Again, that is Lincoln's uh, in the media, which includes music videos, TV shows, and so much more. So uh, latest more set hand in my pocket music video from jagged little pill now the n- next item and taking a quick uh, break i want to reinforce again steel rubber uh, they sponsor us not so much for free stuff but just because they have great products is why i really tend to let everyone know it's s-t-e-e-l-e rubber.com hit them up for all of your weather stripping needs. We had the owner on, he's a great guy, and he talks about why their products are superior over the competition. You can get a free catalog, I believe still, but you can also go to steelrubber.com and you can search Lincoln. And what I always suggest that people do is make a little spreadsheet of the things that you need, put the pricing in there, see what you can afford now based upon your budget and start ordering those parts. Uh, Many of them are easy to change out. Some are a little bit more difficult. But I think the key thing is you don't need everything, in my opinion, right out of the gate. So you can certainly, you know, get what you need, if that makes sense. Okay, the next thing that I want to share with you is Lincoln's for sale. So this 69 Lincoln Continental sedan is for sale and I've kind of, as I've hinted, I've kind of gotten out of the, you know, really trying to help folks sell and buy these cars for the most part, just because of the amount of time I'm trying to, um, push my time to places that, that I find, you know, could be more valuable. However, I've known Jared for a long time, kind of through the Lincoln scene and he had hit me up. Now I had suggested to Jared, as I always do, go the route of bring a trailer. Uh, bring a trailer, I think, is a great route for most people. It's going to help get a worldwide view onto said car. Now, Jared was like, well, hey, would you kind of post it in social media? Would you try to get maybe some traction on it? And I said, certainly, I'll do it. You know, I know you. And, you know, for the most part, we can kind of weed out anybody that maybe is a tire kicker and then we can get them in contact with you. Um, so certainly, this car is in Alabama. And uh, the first thing I'll tell you about it is it is airbagged. So if you happen to be listening to the audio side of this, for the most part, it's stock. Uh, it's not 100% stock uh, because, of, again, air suspension has a custom center console with that goes along with the bench seat. And then also it has uh, the, I believe, Detroit Deviant sill plates on it that kind of give it a cool little appearance. Uh, there, here's a photo I'm showing of the 69. You can see that uh, cool firework going off in the back, but it's got the wide white wall tires, which again, we understand are not factory correct or accurate for that year, but it's a custom Lincoln. Come on, y'all. We can also see here it has a trailer hitch. 
Now, he did uh, have a vintage camper that he would tow behind it. I don't think he towed a lot behind it, but it looked really cool with the car aired out. Uh, here you can see it being washed, and uh, we can see the custom vanity plane, LUV69, which ties into the year 69. Now, these sedans continue to go up in price, and I think some people would say, well, hey, uh, what's the asking price? Of course, obviously, you got to know that. The asking price is 45000 You can email Lincoln uh, Continental Sales or Lincoln Attic Podcast at gmail.com. So either one of those are my email addresses, and I can get you more information. I can give you a link to these um, uh, the, the, these photos. There are a couple videos that we have as well. But basically, here's what you're getting. You're getting a 69 Lincoln Continental custom air suspension. I believe it's a BC Fab kit from the photos that I can tell. The interior was redone with original uh, material. So there's a few places that you can get uh, the original material from. And the interior is very, very nice. Um, just looks really, really stunning. Again, it's airbagged, wide white wall tires. It has AccuAir, so you can adjust it based upon just hitting a button, and the car will go to wherever the preset heights are. It has two tanks. It has Vire compressors, which are the best in the business. Uh, not an over-the-top trunk setup, very basic, but that's all you need. And uh, we do have a couple of photos of kind of how it originally looked. Um, it was, uh, you know, just a car that was not uh, set to be junked. But uh, it's just a car that he took and uh, really put some time and money in. Um, it's also a car that doesn't, it's rust free. Um, you'll see some of the photos underneath it. It's a car that if you want to spend the time and detail the engine bay and detail underneath it and clean some things up, you certainly can. Now, we do believe that the uh, passenger side floor pan was changed at some point. Not a deal breaker. I changed them in my 67 that I had. Uh, certainly someone did some nice work on it. So that would be one thing underneath that has been changed. But I know uh, a lot of times people are looking for these cars. We've seen the 66 through 69 prices continue to increase. And certainly he is open and he is willing uh, to accept offers. So if you want to email Lincoln Attic Podcast or uh, Link, Lincoln Continental Sales at gmail.com. There's one blemish in the paint. He did talk to his friend that is a painter that recently sold his car that we're going to see at Barrett Jackson. And um, th he will fix the paint blemish that you see if you're um, watching on YouTube. There are a couple videos showing the car air, um, airing up and down. There's a video that includes all of the windows going down and the windows going up, including the vent windows. And again, the car airing up and car airing down. So that's a 69 Lincoln Continental uh, that's for sale. And again, you can hit me up. I ask that you don't send a direct message on Instagram because I may miss it. There is so much spam out there. It's frustrating. But again, Lincoln Addict Podcast at gmail.com is an email or Lincoln Continental Sales at gmail.com. I'll get back to you. There's a link to photos. I can get you in contact with the owner, so on and so forth. Lincoln's for Sales is brought to you by our family at Griot's Garage. We had Nick Griot on. It's G R I O T S garage.com. Griot's Garage. Car care for the perfectionist. I always saw these products back in the day, and I always thought it was kind of for the maybe a price range that I couldn't afford. It always seemed like, you know, concourse type stuff. They have reinforced, hey, we sell to everyone. And when I started using these products, I realized the difference. And I'm not a professional detailer, uh, certainly. But uh, the mist and wipes and just the different products that they offer always make my Lincolns look great, especially R65 that's red. So hu huge shout-out to Nick at Agriot's Garage. Okay, with that being said, we're going to get to our main topic, probably the quickest that we've ever gotten to our main topic, and that is Barrett-Jackson's Scottsdale 2024, which I'm going to go into a presentation here in just a moment now. I would ask if you get an opportunity, look up my Substack. Uh, it, you can look up ODB's, ODBS, ODB's Life. Uh, so it's odbslife.substack.com. Uh, what you're going to find from this is it, it is free, 
Uh, you can pledge if you want, but it is free. I'm going to be covering a lot of stuff that's really kind of revolves around my life, which is the mini truck stuff. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see some of that behind me. Um, and then the Lincolns, of course. But I wrote back in early January a, a blog entry, if you will, and it kind of went into the title of 1960s Lincolns to customize or leave stock. And Sometimes I feel when I when I make posts in the Lincoln County Facebook group or maybe even here on the podcast or on this sub stack, you know, people probably go, you know, he's hating on people that customize Lincolns. Certainly I'm not. I would argue I followed custom Lincolns longer than I'd say 98, 99% of the people that are listening or that are in the Lincoln community now because I've been in the Lincolns for a very, very long time. And I was following Mob Steel as an example when they were kind of at their infancy and they had their old website and, you know, they would post things. So, you know, it's definitely not a fad for me. It's not something that, you know, just came along and these cars became popular because, you know, entourage and, you know, this type of stuff. I've been into air suspension and reading truck magazines for 30 years. Um, 93, I think is when I bought my first trucking magazine. And of course, believe it or not, uh, many truckers, which we don't always get the credit for, they were airbagging trucks in 93, uh, even before that, and putting hydraulics on, you know, big dualies and things like that. So uh, I've been around custom stuff my whole life. Arguably, I've been around custom stuff more than I've been around anything stock. I've only been to one concourse uh, type show in my life, and it's only because I helped at it, which was uh, a couple years back in December. Uh, shout out to Chris Dunn for helping me. Uh, kind of pulled me into that. I had a great time that day. But in my blog entry, I kind of dive into uh, this question of will Lincolns surpass? So uh, so I go on with this sentence. Will they surpass pricing of the customized Lincolns, meaning the stock Lincolns? And of course, I say only time will tell. And I give a couple of examples, a 62 that, that sold for 150 grand, and a 61 convertible that sold for 280000 via Gooding and Company. Uh, typically, up until recently, the only Lincolns that would get over like three hundred grand were those that were attached to JFK or his family in some way, sh um, shape, or form. Now, we've seen that kind of thrown out. I think there was a 65 a few years ago that went for over three hundred grand. It was stock. And um, I would tell you this, uh, for the most part, if you are running a business and right, a business is set to make money and you're going, hey, how can I make the most money on a Lincoln? Right now, I would tell you if you built the Lincoln with the right pedigree, you're going to make more money as a resto bot, 100%. People will tell you that have put um, 150, 200,000, 300,000 into a, a restoration for the most part, they're not going to get that back. They may break even or come close to it, but the chances that you're going to have a 100% concourse restoration Lincoln Continental and sell for 300000 plus, it just doesn't typically happen. Now, again, one has. Uh, there was a black one a few years ago, and I know Rich Liana, I believe is how you pronounce his name, he does some of the, the greatest restorations. And I want those cars to go for more and more and more. But it seems like the type of person that's got the funds, they kind of go, wow, you know, I want something with a Coyote. I want something that's custom. Now, I will preface this and say, that is a niche market. Okay, we're going to look at some prices here in just a second. And um, what I will tell you is it, it, it's a niche market. Not everybody has three or four or five or six hundred thousand dollars to buy a Lincoln, right? Do they sell? Absolutely. But we've seen, I think it was at uh, New Orleans last year, uh, the the black uh, 64, 65 from California that had a Coyote. It didn't go for as much as a lot of us thought. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But um, again, I'm not against someone customizing a Lincoln. I have a custom Lincoln. I love custom Lincolns. But I caution people, don't see a price go for 660000 and go, oh, I'm going to put mine online now for 300000 It It doesn't mean your car is worth that much money. Um, it means someone was willing to pay that, but let's look at that car and go, wow, it had a lot of bells and whistles that this person wanted, more than likely. So that's what I want to kind of reinforce here in this presentation.
Now, what I'm going to do in this presentation is essentially go through kind of high level each of these 10 cars that sold in 2024 at Barrett Jackson Scottsdale. I won't go into a super deep dive. I know I mentioned at the beginning, but what I kind of meant by that is I wanted to go through each car and reinforce it and then stick with me to the end. As I mentioned, I'll give an overview as of how did 2024 compare to 2023. So let's start off here with this uh, 63 sedan. Now, if we take a look at it, and you know, this is basically kind of like was a, a survivor car for the most part. It had upgraded to the 134A um, air conditioned setup, so you can see the newer compressor here. And to me, you know, you look at more of a survivor car. Uh, it did have the newer wheel covers, which are you know 64 up, if you will, uh, which means they probably went to a 15 inch wheel for whatever reason. Uh, maybe just because they wanted a 15-inch tire, which seemed to be a little bit easier to get. We have the uh, factory reservoir there uh, for the brake reservoir. Now, this car, you know, it seemed like years ago you could get a sedan easily for five to ten grand. Uh, but obviously those days are kind of gone. But I do think 31 k is a strong price for a 63 sedan. Uh, certainly someone may enjoy this and leave it stock. I would probably do that. Um, or you could have someone going, hey, I want to do a resto mob, but I want to start with a really, really nice car, and that could be what someone's going to do with it as well. Here we have a 63 Continental sedan. This was a resto mod, and I think if if this car had been maybe dialed in a little bit better, it probably would have made more money. Uh, it sold for 44000 which was only about thirteen k higher than the last car, okay? And typically, if we look at, you know, these Lincolns that are blacked out and have air suspension, you know, they're normally going to bring in, um, you know, a pretty good following of people that would be interested in owning it. The wheels are not my style. I totally get that most of you, they're not going to be your style as well. The big thing with this car is it had a Hemi engine in it, okay? Now, let's not forget, a Hemi swapped Lincoln a few years back sold for over $200,000. It was an amazing car. It looked pretty much stock except for the engine swap. This one came in at 44000 There's some things that are cool about it, but at the same time, again, there's a lot of things that aren't my favorite, so I'll just kind of uh, you know, keep some of that to myself. Now, ironically enough, earlier today, or in this episode rather, we were talking about Dakota Digital Gauges. If you take a look at what happened here, they used auto meter gauges, and this is something that we would see from people when they would do swaps. They really didn't have an option like they do now with Dakota Digital. So to kind of plug them again, you'll often see someone swap the gauges like this, which does to me doesn't look too sightly, or you'll have someone with the old school, you know, round gauges underneath the dash. The interior, obviously, not going to be for everyone, and we see that uh, there's aftermarket AC underneath here. The trunk setup, you know, it always kind of trips me out, the photos that people submit. You know, you've got, you would think that people would want to, de you know, detail this and vacuum a little bit more. Not dissing the seller, I'm just saying to me. If I was looking to spend a good chunk of change, you know, going and wiping all this down, you know, you see the weathering here on the Vire compressor and things like that. But, hey, everybody's different. I'm just pointing out what I see. This trunk setup isn't what you're typically going to see now from a, a newer style build. A lot of times the air tank is hidden. You've got your stereo on the right side, your battery. Uh, you know, again, it's just to each their own. But that 60 three sold for 44k and again the amount of money that was put into it and then you look at the 63 that was stock you kind of go man i mean there's probably money left on the table if that thing could have really been dialed in this 67 convertible very cool color a little bit thicker white wall stripe john cashman gave his blessing on this one you could follow him on instagram the lincoln man and this car, he rode in as across the block. It sold for sixty-eight thousand two hundred. A very cool car to me. This th this is one that we're can. This is one that we're starting to see again. The prices continue to increase on sixty-six and sixty-seven convertibles. They're almost identical in many ways. You know, the average person can't tell the sixty-six and sixty-seven apart. But to me, they're underrated classics. 
I think so many people love the ones, twos, and threes, and then the fours and fives by themselves, that the sixes and sevens don't get the love that they deserve, but we're starting to see that come around more and more. Again, strong price, in my opinion, uh, almost 70 grand. Uh, I will also tell you, if you look at the photos of this one, I love the color, but it, like if you look at the engine bay, for instance, you know, you could spend a weekend or you could pay someone to detail and really dial it in. I don't think that's a challenge. One thing I've never really talked about, and this is ironic, is this battery tray cover, uh, the, the hold down. That's probably a huge unicorn item right there in originality because you rarely ever see this even on nice cars. Now, I do not have it, I don't think, on my 64 or 65. And ironically enough, uh, my wife's daily driver, I had to change the battery recently, and it's a very similar hold down uh, to this. And, you know, so often when you change a battery, you just don't even put those back on, especially back in the day. People didn't care. They took those two nuts off. They pulled that little hold down, and it got discarded. Nobody cared about it. You know, the battery is not really moving around. Uh, now, I wouldn't encourage you not to put your battery hold down back on, but I happened to notice that, and I thought to myself, that is um, really rare. So a nice, nice car there. Uh, 66 a limo, Lehman Peterson. This was owned by a jazz player. Not going to be everybody's cup of tea, but I think this was an awesome price. Very strong for a limo that has been customized. There's not a lot of these Lehman Peterson limos out there. I've talked a little bit about that. This one has the isotope wheels and it is airbagged. I think it was owned by a jazz player and I would say a very strong price for that custom car. This was one of the surprises, 67 Lincoln Continental Convertible. Basically a stock car, right? Not resto modded, stock drivetrain, and it went for almost 150000 So $143,000, and it has the Detroit Steel Wheel Co's on it. Uh, if we take a look here, we will see, you know, nothing over the top. I mean, a very clean engine bay. You've got some detailing in here. You can kind of tell that it looks like someone either took really good care of this or they went in here and kind of touched things up and painted some pieces, which looks really, really good. Um, but if you would have told me that a 66 or 67 convertible would have went for almost 150 k I wouldn't have believed you. I like the color of the other one a little bit more, you know, because there's so many black Lincolns, but certainly the black paint on this car didn't hurt the sale, that's for sure. Now, some people chimed in on some of my um, videos and posts, and they said, hey, you know, such and such car wasn't as super nice or, you know, in person it was wavy and things like that. And I would tell you and encourage you, always look at the car hands-on if you can. You know, go and see it with your own eyes because you never want to get into a situation where you buy something that you regret. This 69 convert or sedan, rather, is owned by Gary Dobson. Uh, Gary, I've met him. I've hung out with him. This is a very cool car. This is not the same car that I showed earlier that's for sale. However, my understanding is that Gary painted this car the same color as that other car because he liked it so much, and he knows Jared who's selling the 69 I showed earlier. The biggest difference with this one is it has a GM drivetrain. So if we take a look here, it's not going to kind of tickle everybody's fancy, but you can see this is a lot of work. One, it's a souped-up engine. It's got AC, and it's got some metal panels in there to make the engine bay look really nice. You see an aftermarket center console, the switch box for your air suspension. And the biggest call out here is that rear offset wheel. You've got that big lip on that billet aluminum wheel, and that's accomplished by narrowing the rear end. So there's a chunk taken out of the rear end on both sides that's welded back together, and then there's new axles installed. It's a big mod, I get it, but that's what allows for this car to look different because it has that huge rear offset wheel. I love the car. I thought it would have brought more money, but I will tell you this, just because you think a car is going to bring a lot more money doesn't always mean that it will. And I think that's the case here. This was another surprise for me. Justin Carrillo, um, Vision, Rod and Customs, I believe on Instagram or something similar to that. Uh, Justin is no stranger to building some awesome, amazing rides, whether it be Cadillacs, C10s, uh, K5 Blazers, or in this case, a 64 Lincoln. Very cool color, in my opinion. Uh, awesome set of wheels. And it's low. It has air suspension. 
it's not going to appeal to everyone, and I think that's why the price maybe sh- reflects you know less than six figures. This car, to me, if I had the money and I was looking for a convertible, I would have bought this over the sixty seven that we saw earlier. But again, that's all preference. You know, I like air suspension. I like low cars. I like being able to go to a, a car show and air it out. A- another person may hate that which is, you know, is, is maybe why we ended up the way we did with this sale price. Uh, you can see the Autronic Eye, so it has the automatic headlight dimmer option. Again, it's air suspension. you got a nice, pretty nice lip on that rear wheel. Another thing that may not be a fan favorite are the uh, shaved door handles. So although, you know, in the custom world, that's done on mini trucks and hot rods and everything in between, on the Lincoln, it's so iconic to have those door handles uh, together and there because of the rear suicide coach doors that allows for both of those door handles to of course be side by side uh tip of the cap to ali ali from isotope wheels this was th- th- an amazing win for him i did a whole video on this if you want to check it out on the channel and i talked about who would spend six hundred sixty thousand. i also talked about who bought this car Ali has had some hiccups in the past, although he's had great success. You know, we talked a little bit, a bit with him one time, and, you know, the, he's had some weird, odd things that have happened, like, you know, an auctioneer changes right around the time that his car flips, you know, or, or goes across the block, and that results in the auctioneer going, okay, boom, you know, hammering really quick. And I was like, well, hold on. You know, isn't the goal for Barrett Jackson and for the seller to make more money? You know, let it roll a minute, like, give it a second. But Ali never let that get him down. And what I've noticed from Ali is, you know, with some of the builds in the past with the GM drivetrains, you know, you had the whispers of, well, you know, if he would have put a Coyote or why did he put a GM drivetrain? Well, Ali did what any good business person would do is he listened to some of the feedback, good or bad. He went back to the drawing board and he hinted to us last year when David Escalante was on and he said, hey, Jay, we're going to bring something special to Barrett Jackson Scottsdale 2024, and that he did with this car. Um, as I said in my deep dive um, post sale, Coyote engine, a lot of bells and whistles, QA1 coilovers, a lot going on for this car. And the gentleman that bought it certainly has the money uh, to be able to afford it. He kind of checked a lot of boxes, but Ali also chimed in on one of my videos or posts, and he said, hey, Jay, I know you said a little bit of luck, but Ali said, hey, I think it was a lot of luck. And I do believe you'll you'll hear in my wrap-up message that with these auctions, it is a 100% gamble, okay? This car could have sold for 100 grand. Luckily, it didn't, but... It is a gamble, right? So these people are putting a lot on the line and, you know, tip of the cap again. I don't have my hat on. Here it is. Tip of the cap to Ali for this sale and to all of his friends that were there, the Suicide Cla- suicide Slabs crew, uh, as well as the Raddies and all, everyone else that was there to witness it. Okay, two more cars. 63 Lincoln Continental Sedan. This one was a huge surprise to me. 189200 now, I forgot to hyperlink this, so I want to jump over here, and here's what we got. So it's a blacked out 63 sedan. Okay, it's not going to you know, be for everyone. I get it. But this is, this is why people are resto modding these cars. We saw at the very beginning a 63 sedan that sold for 30 k give or take. This car sells for six times that amount, okay? And the only reason is, think about it, it's black, which people love blacked out cars. I'm not the biggest fan of everything blacked out, but I get it. You've got AC, you've got a GM drivetrain, you've got modern seats, modern console, you've got a, it looks like a stick shift there, right? Um, You have, uh, I I mentioned AC, you've got upgraded brake system. The... Uh, I love customized stuff. This is kind of a little odd. You've got uh, what appears to be a a Bel Air or an Impala Dash. A highly customized car. But again, if this was a stock sedan and it was in good condition, maybe maybe it would have went for 30 grand. This caught someone's eye and it went for almost 190,000. 189,000, yeah. So 
you know, again, kind of crazy the way things go, but 189000 for a 63 sedan. Lastly, we have a 61 convertible. This is the first year of the fourth gen Lincoln Continental. People love these front ends. They love the 61s in general. And this one has the wide white wall, which they kind of came with for the most part. You also have a newer style wheel cover on it. That's a couple of things that stick out. If we take a look at this car before we wind everything down, uh, we will see a very clean engine bay, a very nice car. Um, some odd things here, you know, a little bit of the scratches in the heel pad. It looks like maybe it was dyed or sprayed. Uh, you've got some red accents here, which I don't believe were factory. Uh, and then you have some material here on uh, the glove box. You know, a couple things that weren't factory correct. Uh, it has a two-port versus a three-port fuel pump, non-AC car, uh, strong price, I would say, for this car, but it does look, from what we can tell, pretty nice. Now, in conclusion, here's what I want to kind of reinforce to everyone as we wrap this episode up. If you look on the left side, there's 10 cars, okay? Not in any particular order, just the order that I went in the with, with my presentation. 61 to 69, 10 cars sold for 1389200 That's easy math. I can do that in my head. 138920 average for the 10 cars. In 2023, there were 11 cars sold from that same range, $1.744 million. Average sale price, 158600 Okay. Why do I say this? Well, if you look this year, we know all these cars really drove up that average on the Lincolns. If we look last year, there was one car in the 300000 range, which, again, my mind is still kind of blown that it was this car, although it looks cool. You know, it had that whole front clip welded in. It had the, you know, the modern drivetrain, obviously, Colorado custom wheels. You know, it had a lot going for it, but typically the 66, 67s just don't hit that range. But you had that 300000 car. You had three in the 200000 range. You had three in the 100000 you had two almost at 100K, and then you had two, um, one at 44K, one at 50K. A lot of different fluctuation. The reason why I bring this up is a lot of times when I post a car, someone will say, you know, so-and-so is an idiot. There's no way. I can't believe it. That'll never happen again. I could give example after example of this stuff happening uh, where, you know, someone goes, you know, hey, there's no way that car will sell again, you know, or there's no way a car will ever hit that number. Well, we saw it with Joe at Will County Customs, you know, in the 700,000 range a couple of years ago, and then Ali comes back and, and hits almost, you know, very close to that number. But the moral of the story that I have for everyone is don't think when you see these prices that your car is worth that much, okay? Now, certainly, if you've got a nice car, there's plenty of options for you to sell it. I truly think Barrett Jackson is good for the business person that's building a car, or if you've got something just wildly unique and you want to get worldwide audience on it, Barrett Jackson's fantastic. But if you're in a position where you know you need to cash out and you know you're expecting 200 grand on a car because everybody thinks that's what it's worth, maybe you're going to pay for your kid's college, or you're going to pay off a house, or you're going to be retiring, or whatever. Just know it is a huge gamble. Uh, we saw that, uh, what was it, the 65 that had the Coyote engine that went to New Orleans last year? You know, that we all thought was going to go for a lot more money. You know, if that guy was banking on 200, 250, 300 grand and it doesn't come, you know, that's, you know, that's a lot of stress, right? So I just think that if you've got a car that you're sitting on, you know, don't think, hey, I'm going to go clean the gas tank out and I'm going to sell it for 100 grand. Um, now, certainly, some of these folks, you know, they go after specific things. They look at the market. Ali certainly has, and he said, hey, I've done the GM drivetrain thing. I know a lot of guys and ladies are doing that to their personal cars. I'm going to come spend the extra money and do a Coyote and see what it does. He gambled, and it paid off, so tip of the cap to him. But I think those are maybe some of my thoughts that the car world right now is on fire, okay? And everything is going really, really well. You know, people talk about making things even better. I mean, year over year increases if what Barrett Jackson and Mecham, I believe, posted that they had a records. Uh, it does reinforce that, hey, things are going well, and there's people out there that have the money to spend on these cars. But I caution you and say, hey, look, just because one car sells for 
seven hundred plus thousand a couple years ago. That was an over the top build by Joe at Weld County Customs. I mean, that was a concourse slash resto mod that you could eat off underneath the car. It was so awesome. Ali's has a lot of great factors to it. The car a few years ago that uh, I forget if Rich Liana did that rest that restoration, but it had over three hundred thousand in receipts. It sold for around that price. You know. There are some of these cars, but keep in mind, some of these cars are those wild examples, okay? They're not the run-of-the-mill, like, hey, I got a 63 convertible that needs a lot of stuff, and I want to sell it. You know, those kind of cars are going to top out at a certain amount of money because someone's not going to go spend a hundred grand on a car that they have to do everything to. So that's just my opinion, certainly. And for all the people worldwide that listen to what I have to say, whether it's a minute or, in this case, an hour, I certainly appreciate the support. If you can, if you're on YouTube, leave a comment, leave an emoji, thumbs up, click the uh, notification bell. Do all that stuff if you want to leave a thanks or super thanks. Uh, I'm getting near my goal so I can uh, transition into more stuff I can do here on YouTube. Thank you so much for all the support. Uh, In closing, I'm going to pull this back up. And remind everyone, I do different cover art for every episode. That takes me time as well. But I want to thank Devious Customs, Colorado Custom Wheels, Steel Rubber, Griot's Garage, and, of course, AccuAir. You can find more information on their websites. um, And they are some of the best products out there. I understand customizing a car is not for everyone. Griot's. That's that's detailer. That's that's stuff you're going to need for your car anyways. Steel rubber, save those receipts. If you buy those products, it's going to help increase the value of your car because you're putting the best weather stripping on your car. Colorado Custom Wheels, who doesn't want a custom set of wheels that are built with aluminum? The hubcaps won't go flying. And oh, by the way, Jeff at Devious Customs, whether you want air suspension, a windshield, maybe some window switches for your car, hit up DeviousCustoms.com. To all my friends out there and all of the supporters, all the Lincoln Addicts, don't forget you can hit up the website, lincolnaddict.com. I've got uh, stickers on there. I have a few shirts left as well. And for you folks that have a 64, I have these replica warranty cards available. And uh, they're about the best I could do in a very similar blue. You can put this in your glove box. They are empty. Uh, there's no nothing filled in, so you can fill it in or leave it, put it in your glove box, whatever you want to do with it. But... To everyone out there, stay on the rise. Much love from the Lincoln Addict. ODV, we out of here. Peace.